Hi, my beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with Genesis Kingdom, um, part one. Um, today's topic, I picked Shiloh, um, which is, um, well, let me take it like this. It's the four wings, you know, of God, which is the garden of God's um, Shiloh. It explains. <clears throat> And that's a lot in the Bible. And I, I think I looked it up once, to be honest with you, and I really took no thought into it. I thought it was just another word for God. And I really thought that. Boy, was I wrong. Shiloh is God, you know? And our creator, our real creator, and this is this, there's different names for it. But as I learned and I got the revelation today, that you got God of what you call God in the world, which is man, but it's also Satan, um, Blam, Blam, the one that he calls God, and that's proved in, um, which is the fallen Adam, which is in Luke um, 3, towards the end. And I'm going to close it up with that, so just to kind of get a little refresher, what I mean by that, and that is the heritage of Jesus that they made, which is also Satan. It is, <laughs> and I know it's hard to believe, but I could back it up with Bible verses. But you got the God of the world, which from hell, that is speaking in the Bible. And then you got the creator that sends people to go ahead and curse them because of what they're doing. And that's also in here. Then you got the one that they call God. If you don't really do the research of the world that says, I send them to go destroy them, to go take territory. If I today was the first time revelation that I said, damn, that was God that sent that. Let me prove it. Um, yesterday, um, as I was doing some research, um, and the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the four winds and I was like the four winds and I had it and I thought maybe it had to do with applied, um, with, um, the ones that I had just done, um, as of yesterday, the four gardens of God, um, backed it up with Genesis, uh, help me Holy Spirit two. So the four winds of God is the four gardens of God. Um, and it had this little saying with it. And it said, the north wind is the wind of satisfaction. The south wind overthrows the men. It hits the east wind and is the wind that brings rain. And the wind of the west is mightier than the men that are living there. And remember, those are the four Garden of Eden. It's the Garden of Eden. And I was able to back it up with Bible verses. The men that were there saying they were God. It was them. They were chosen. They had the hardest of hell with them up here. And they're getting pushed out. So that's what the four wings, the four daughters, it's daughters. So they're coming from every side of the wind and it's coming with the truth to deliver not just the daughters, but also yourself in this world. So that's what it's saying. And that's what it's going to be. They're powerful sources, the makers in us. And it's pushing them out, out of a land that they pushed us out the very beginning of Genesis. They have been living this life for so long, the whole world was corrupted, even to think. Jesus is, is the one that they call Jesus, the Messiah. He's a demonic. Um, and I can prove it. <laughs> and I have um, verified it with a couple of them. They all come from um, the Hellenist. Um, Joseph's grandfather was a Hellenist, and that's in Luke 3. And I'm going to close it up with that. So let me go with Shiloh and what it started. So I put the definition of Shiloh yesterday. And it says, the meaning of Shiloh is an un it's just unclear. Sometimes it's translated as um, a messiah, messianic, it says. The title, that means he who is or a pacific, pacificator or tranquility. That refers to Sumerian and Penetouch, um, regardless of the name of Shiloh, is the town that is diverted from one that it may be translated as a tranquility town. So I thought, right? So you do more, right? So then it also brought me to Genesis 2, 11, 12. Sorry, I opened up a lot of them to get them ready. Just to verify that the four winds, the four gardens of God, 
um, where they come from, um, our creator Shiloh. So it brings me back to Genesis 2, um, 11 and 12, which is the name of the first is Pishon. And it's the winds through the entire land of Hilaliah, where there is gold. The gold is the land of Aramic that resigns with the onyx that is there. The second river is Gishon, and it's winds. It winds, W-I-N-D-S, through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which it runs along the east side of Asahur. And the fourth river is the Ephorites, right? That's the Ephorites River. So, let me see. And then um, Shiloh is actually um, mentioned by um, Jacob as well. So this is just like with me doing a study, right? So it also, um, Shiloh was mentioned by, by Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is in Genesis 49.10, with the context that it returned to the return of the Messiah, that it was not representing Jesus Christ, and it wasn't. And there it says representing Jesus Christ, but it's not. Um, it's returning to the Messiah, period, right? They added Jesus Christ. They made up Jesus Christ. Uh, there was a child that was born that belonged to the ungodly world. And there was a daughter that was born, daughters, that were the firstborn that there were daughters. It was a woman Messiah. It wasn't a man. But they tainted it to put it he, he, he. And as you learn the Bible, you understand that is the God of hell that they call God. And I could back it up with Luke 3, that they call God, um, that is all Mary, uh, Mary, Joseph, all that lineage that comes from what? The fallen Adam that got sent to hell because he ate out of the forbidden fruit. And that is in Luke 3. I could back it up. That lineage comes from Jesus, comes from that, the Hellenist. So it's not of God. The one that they call God, yes, not ours. But if you read the Bible, it tells you from the God that is sending, that is Jesus that is on there, that he caused that chaos in there. So with that being said, in Genesis 49.10, Genesis 49.10, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, none a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Until him shall they gather the people be. Do you understand that? That is the creator that is coming, is Shiloh that is in us, that you cannot see till you think everybody. Like that's the most powerful source that we have, right? So then it says, Binding the fool unto the vine is his ass cold, that choice is a vine. But he washes garments with wine and clothes in the blood of grapes. And if you all know, um, and this goes further in there, that talks about Sidon and Sublin, which um, is the Sublin, they dwell in the heavens of the sea, right? So, that, so they are, those are the sea monsters. Those are the people, and they shall be of the heaven of the ships of border that they shall be inside in. As the sure is strong as couching between the two burdens. And if you do the history, they come from the, the clan. It says, Dan shall dove his people, the tribes of Israel. They shall be a serpent by the way of the adder in the path. As you go down more, it tells you who the people really are. And they come from the descendants of Noah. Um, the old from the agent that they forgot about the creator and they make themselves God. Um, so then that says that, right? So then as I'm doing a, a little bit of research in this, and it really says it just like that. And this is um, what gave me the biggest revelation because I was all like, you know, and really if you think about it, um, unless you do further testing, I mean, further reading in this, you can't even comprehend what this was saying. And this is exactly how it is as you look, you know, to find Bible verses um, and look it up to see what that Bible verse meant. So 
it says exactly like this in a little quote. It says, Daddy Freeze, quote it, Jeremiah 7, 12 to 15, where it was recorded that God destroyed Shiloh. Who is God? Right? God is coming to save his people. That is Shiloh that I just read to you in Genesis 49, 10. And then you got Daddy Freeze quoted Jeremiah 7, 12, 15, where it was recorded that God destroyed his Shiloh. Why are we resurrecting it every year? Why is she coming back every year if we continue killing her? We continue going in there and killing her. Why is she resurrecting? That's exactly what he's saying. So I said, who is Daddy Freeze, right? It's also back up in Jeremiah 7, 12, 15. But I Googled Daddy Freeze Bible meaning. Praying to Lucifer. More effective than praying to Jesus. Daddy Freeze is a reino and I'll make a clash over the Bible interpretation. <laughs> it says, um, it says, it is known. It says, uh, well, it has a name that I can't pronounce, but it says he was born in six. I'm going to spell it for you just so you can know. It's I F E D A Y O. And then the last name is Olerden, which is um, O-L-A-R-I-N-D-E, was born in 6 May 1976, popularity known as Daddy Freeze. It's a Nigerian, Romanians, um, broadcaster, the radio, the talk show host, right? So I go down a little bit more to find out more about, well, basically it said Lucifer. And you won't believe what I found in here. That's who they call Daddy Freeze. Is the Daddy Freeze was married and both had two children. You know, let me go to this. <laughs> it's Lucifer, and that's who is speaking this. Um, it went further in it and saying, um, I have some more Bible verses that I have to go with you in here that is in the, the conclusion. Um, it's also known as um, as him um, being the, and it was huge, brothers and sisters, uh, that it's a man mermaid. It's a sea. You know how everybody always thought it was a woman mermaid? And it talks about the beast. It showed pictures. I mean, it showed a lot that it, it just mind buggled me, you know. Anyways, let me take you to um, what he wrote. And Daddy Freeze quoted Jeremiah 7, 12, 15, because they also got the gods of the world that were sitting there writing in the Bible that called themselves God. And then we got Shiloh that is the creator. That's why he's saying, this is exactly what he said, that God destroys Shiloh, why are we resurrecting it every year? Why does she keep coming back every year? Why? Because they can't kill her no more. The daughters of four wings, they can't kill them. Those are the high archies. Those are the daughters. Those were the firstborn. Those are the ones that are coming from the wind, preaching the truth about who the real creator is and taking out the man system that is the beast system, that is Lucifer's system, that we were all raised believing, baby Jesus, oh my goodness. And I, I bought into that. I bought into that. The one that they did, the one that they're making themselves, saying that they are Satan. And I could sit there and back it up. Now in Jeremiah, brings me to Jeremiah 7, 12, 15. And there's more. Jeremiah 7. 12. So it's Jeremiah 12, 15. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at first, and see that I did to it. For the wickedness of my people of Israel. And now because you have done all these works. The Lord I spake unto you. 
rising up early and speaking that you have not heard. It says, and I called you and you answer not. The house that is called in my name became the den of robbers and not into the house of thieves. And if you remember how God, a lot of people took that Bible verse. And let me explain, there's more. Um, a lot of people took that Bible verse um, as far as like God was saying um, that he didn't like um, uh, gambling. That wasn't why. It's because they were selling the women. They, remember, she refers to a lot of them as birds, like doves, lambs. Um, you know, it's just a lot of the way she is worded. You know, so they were selling. Remember how it says dove? Uh, they were selling doves. They were selling this. They were selling. That's what she was upset about. But it says, that, but if you don't really look for the word as far as like what Shiloh meant and get the deep definition of it and really even what it was that they were celebrating, um, was kind of like beyond me. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Let me go here. And the meaning of Shiloh and what it meant also um, brought me to um, everybody knows the story of Hannah and Phinehas and Elkanah and Eli. So it brought me to that because that's basically what, what it's talking about. Um, about how they went in there and they took territory of it. And it tells you. Um, go ahead and get it. Sorry. Um, let's see what I'm doing. The Battle of Shiloh was, was crucial success for the Union Army, led by the General Ulysses, which was the Grand Army in Tennessee named for the river that is not in the state. But it was allowed Grant to begin a massive operation in Mississippi, in the valley, right, later on that year. So it says the people of Jerusalem has, oh, okay. Yeah, God was upset. Uh, I'll read that almost towards the end so you could know basically um, why she was upset because we were going to the enemies for help, you know? So it brought me to Samuel to understand what that meant when they went into Shiloh and they took it. And this is when they took the tabernacle. And that's what it brought it to. So it brought me to 1 Samuel. I'm so sorry. I'm making sure that I'm doing it right so you can understand what it is, the message that is on there. Was there a wrath of God? Yeah, there was. But we all know that just like with Job, they weren't allowed to kill us. They weren't allowed to do anything, not even to the children, you know, but they took it beyond that. Remember, um, Job was all the way sick with the plague all the way till the end. And he's asking God for forgiveness, you know, but Satan does it, you know, he allows it. But a lot of it is testing to see what you would do in your time of testing. You know, we were all basically, you know, in hell because of sin. So then it brought me to one Samuel, um, two. To 12. And it brings me, I, I went to as far as the part to start in 12. Um, I'm sorry, 22. I apologize. Because really it was when they went in there and they took territory. So it says Eli and his son. Eli and I was very old and he kept hearing everything his son was doing uh, to the Israelites. You see? And that they were even sleeping with the woman who worked at the entrance at the tent of the Lord's presence. And he said to them, why are you doing these things? Everyone tells me about the evil that you're doing. Stop it, my son. It is lawful for the thing of people for the Lord to be talking about. If anyone sins against someone else, God can defend him, but he could also defend someone whose sin is against the Lord. It says, but they would not listen to their father and the Lord decided to kill him, right? 
the boy Samuel continued to go and gain favor both of the Lord and the people. And the prophecy against Eli's family. The prophet came to Eli. You know, and, and this is, I'm going to go ahead and read this real quick so you could get the definition of what God was really saying even to his children. And it says, the people of Israel, the, the people of Jerusalem has sought alliance with the kings of other nations instead of trusting God. It says, now they are accused and of rejecting a gentle flowing water of Shiloh, the streams that brought water into Jerusalem, the city of God. You know, in there, God send you Shiloh. God send you the maker. God send you the children, the four wings to go in there with sending prophets. And instead of listening to the people that she was sending you, you were listening to to the people that wanted so much to destroy you. And if you don't really listen, that even Eli is telling his sons, he's saying, man, I heard what you're doing to the Israelites. I hear what you're doing that. And you're in the midst of them and seeing them as your best friend. And they want nothing more than what you felt. They don't give a shit. They don't care. That's why the woman would get raped. Even men were getting raped up there. They didn't care. Little babies, little boys being killed, women being torn apart. And yet, because somebody was picking up a Bible and not hanging out, we were being called bougie. We were being called that we thought we were too good to hang out. But you didn't understand the war that was really around us. I did. I did. I knew that there was a satanic people and there was evil people that had been in the land of the living that had been a long time dead because Satan um, which is Adam got sent to hell. He died. What did it tell him when he ate the forbidden fruit? You will surely die and you will be sent to hell. So he's been in the midst around everybody and everybody's hanging out after him. And then you think, right? How is he able to still even bear children? Because there is a life after death. There is a life after death. It's either it's going to be in hell or it's going to be in heaven. And the new heaven, the new earth, because she's healing the land. She's parting the sea. We're no more unclean. No more dead is going to be upon us. Why do you think, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. And then you got the people that were calling themselves God and sitting out there in the midst of you. And because a woman came and said, no, I am a chosen vessel of God. Of course, you're going to get the wicked that get on here and be like, it's those ones that are saying prophets all bad. Why are you getting mad when we're preaching nothing but the truth? And we're preaching peace. We're not preaching here that we come to come and kill and still destroy. Your father that you call daddy freeze does that already to this world. And Adam, he's lost. He's gone. He serves the darkness. He perished a long time ago and he knows what side he sit on. You don't. You're titter tottering and believing he's God. No, he isn't. He's the God of hell. And still then, God was sending Blam. Do you remember the story about the donkey still sending him not to go that way because he was being sent to set, to offer money so he could attack you that were around him. And God was using that, that um, Shiloh in there, that spirit of her that is in us to not to go that way. Still trying to save him in the midst of the darkness. And then it says, to counsel me, okay, it says, it says, from all the tribes of Israel, I chose his family to be my priest, to serve the altar, to burn the incense, to wear the ephod, to console me. I gave them the right to keep the share of sacrifices of burnt offering altars. What do you look at with greed? The sacrifices of offerings I require my people. Why, Eli, why do you honor your sons more than me? By letting them fatten themselves on the best parts of all the sacrifice of my people offered to me. I, the Lord God of Israel, promise in the past with your family that your clan have served me as priest for all the time. By now, I say that I would have it any longer, but instead I honor those who honor me. I will treat with contempt those who despise me. Listen to the time is coming when I will kill all young men in your family. 
your clan so that no man in your family will live to be old and you were troubled to look for envy blessing and I will give to other people of Israel but the one of your family everyone to live of old age yet I will keep the one from your descendants alive and he will serve me as a priest but he will become blind and lose all the hope and all your other descendants will die a violent death you know you got the ones that God did and they made themselves God and forgot about the creator you know and then you read the story when blam you know the other gods were telling and they come you're in control of them right now shit go ahead and let's attack them let's do this let's do that and you guys are hanging out with people that are lost like that because they don't want you to know the truth so you stay in bondage that that's the pathway to hell the ten commandments though the water covet is of our god our creator the real creator it's a woman's covet you know, and say even if she picked a king to look over you to do that. A lot of them got paid off to go do wrong. And still you got somebody that he was telling, why are you doing that to Israel's kids? Why are you going in there and sleeping with that woman in front of the tent? Why, why, why? And God said, I see what you're doing to my children. So she comes in there and still you go and ask the people that are so much against you, go and ask them for help. Go to Pharaoh and ask Pharaoh for help. But she says, the one I send you, we don't go for help. Why do we do that? Because we don't like her. We don't like him. They think they're too bougie. They think they're too good. Oh, uh-huh. They think they know more than us. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He has you right where he wants you. And still in the midst of them. So then when the glory of God lives from there, then what happens? Then all hell road breaks loose. However, they're still not allowed to take you all the way out. But you know what? Satan is a deceiver. He comes to steal, steal, and he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And yet, you're still so desperate to go hang out with men that are demonic kings that want nothing for you to fail. And you too, you men that want to go and hang out with queens that are demonic that want you so much not to fail in this world as well. When the, it says, and then will become blind. Okay, and the descendants. Well, it says the descendants will die a violent death. It says, when you and your two sons, um, Hafani and Phinehas, both die on the same day, I will show you everything that I said to come true. I will choose a priest to be faithful to me, to do everything that I want him to do. I will give him descendants who will also serve in the presence of my chosen king. Any of the descendants who survive will go to the priest and ask him for money, food, and beg and allow to the help of priests in order to have something to eat. You know, there was somebody put there to hold, to hold it. Somebody there to take care of you, to feed you, to do that. And they, they weren't doing it. They were feeding themselves, making themselves fat, taking care of them, all luxury, all everything. And then you get the ones that were sitting out there, not having a place to sleep. I seen it out there. Not having a place to sleep, not having enough money for this, you know, it's wicked, wicked. And this is just to wake you up. You have a God, the people that call themselves God, and even as God as God picks them, they end up straying away. We have a demonic entity that is out there and it's just waiting waiting in a prey and looking to see who he could devour. And as you read who Shiloh is, yes, it is a place, it is a place, but it's also Mother God, the Spirit. That is the Messiah that is coming, that she's already here in the midst of us, with us, in us. We are her. We're in the image of her. And we come as a woman Messiah, but because everybody's so tainted, that is a man, a man, we cannot accept that. I have to close it up. The 30 minutes are up. So I'll go ahead and start part two um, and finish up the story about how they stole the glory of God and how they celebrate that holiday. They call it the Ulysses holiday or Ulysses temple, which is out here in the mountain, if you haven't noticed it. Um, but with that being said, um, shalom, shalom.